So hey everybody, it's Christy, the teacher from next door, the homeschool teacher from next door. <laughs> and class is in session now, all right? Today we're talking about New Year's resolutions. My dog has apparently made the resolution to be scary sounding in the next room when I make a video. Did you hear her? <laughs> anyway, she's in her... Anyway, so yes, and have you decided on any resolutions? Now, I asked my husband this earlier today, and you know what he told me was, well, you know what? I won't ever make a resolution of something I'm going to do. I make a resolution of what I'm not going to do. <laughs> and I think that's awesome. You know, maybe you want to go at it from that angle. In 2024, these are the following things I ain't doing. <laughs> go at it that direction. See if that helps you out. Oh, me. But, um... I looked on Google because I was curious to see what are the most common uh, New Year's resolutions. Because I think I've probably made them all, you know? So let's give it a look. The most common New Year's resolution is... Money management. Who said it? Oh, I heard you! Money management. Great job. That is... By far, like half of the people that make New Year's resolutions, oh, I will be better with money. Good. Let me explain to you like I explained to my kids. Money is essential to your life. Unfortunately, that's the truth. And um, you need to learn how to use it. If you do not have a financial education, you need to get yourself one. Because it is absolutely outrageous that we don't get it taught to us and we have to go seek it ourselves. But, you know, that's all right because when you go seek it yourself, you take more into it, I think. You know what I'm saying? So, um, go get yourself a financial education. My son, my son, my husband and I gave each other for Christmas a uh, Dave Ramsey course, the Financial Peace University. And I ain't going to talk all about this and all that, but, dude. The best investment that you will ever make is in your own education. So, I'll leave it with you there. And I'll tell you that if that's your New Year's resolution, invest in it. It's good stuff. Number two is studying the Bible. Let's get back to that. We'll get back to that. Another one is learn another language. Ah, oh, this is a great one. I love this one. I love learning new languages anyway. I'm actually a collector of interesting words in other languages. My current favorite word is Bezerweiser. And if you saw my other video talking about um, um, making books and how to study in your books, you heard all about the Bezerweiser. But the Bezerweiser is a German word that means a know-it-all. Here's River. Rivers came to see us. You gonna see the river. There she goes. Oh, and there's Oscar. Oh, I thought that was Elmo that they had murdered. Thankfully not. It's just a blanket. So there we go. So yeah, Besserweiser. It means a know-it-all. And it's in German. Literally, it translates to being better, wiser. You are better, wiser. Better, wiser. Hello, River. Hi. Are you talking? Are you talking to Mommy? She thinks that Mommy's going to get her bone. River's a service dog. You never do this to your other dogs. No! She's a trained professional growler and noisemaker. <laughs> What's wrong? She wants to talk. Give me a minute and I'll come back. Okay. So I'm scratching River. We'll see how long she lets me film before I have to pause it again. So learning another language. Well, of course, River would suggest to you to learn 
sign. When I was a kid and I learned how to sign, you said sign language like this. You learn how to sign. And now they do it like this. You learn how to sign. You learn how to talk with your fingers. <laughs> That's what my husband complains about. I don't speak fingers whenever I start signing to him. Um, and one of the best places to learn American Sign Language is for free life print. Seriously, uh, I think it's Dr. Bill Vickers is his name, and he is a proud deaf man, a deaf man in the deaf community, and he teaches you a lot about their culture and everything as he teaches you the American Sign Language. It is amazing. Definitely, and it's for free. And all you got to do is go down there and get busy on that. Um, another thing that you can use to learn new languages is an app called Duolingo. And I like that one. It's really good. And uh, if you're in the state of Georgia, you can use, uh, it's not Duolingo. It's another one that is already paid for for people who have a library card with the Pines Library System. I can't remember what the name of it is. Hopefully, I'll remember it when I edit it. All right. So, um, one more thing I would tell you to do with learning a new language. Find somebody to learn it with. Because if you don't use it, you forget it. I mean, you truly do. I learned how to sign from my grandfather when I was a little girl. And the way that he taught me was we would listen to Elvis music and country records, you know. And we learned how to sing a Dixie Land Delight. You know, and we learned how to say, are you looking for trouble? Da, 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 da. Then you came to the right place. You know, and we got real fancy with it because we were dancing. But, you know, years went on. I didn't really have anybody to talk to in American Sign Language except my son. And then we found River at the pound. So now I sign to her all the time. Does she sign back? Uh-huh. Of course she does. She asks for a bone all the time. <laughs> all the time. Another real uh, popular resolution is uh, for your health. Uh, maybe weight loss, uh, believe it or not, weight gain, uh, lowering your cholesterol, all that such. Um, one of the things that I find that helps universal across the board when it comes to any of that kind of stuff is, are you drinking enough water? We'll get back into that. Drink some water. You are, your body is like, I don't even know what percentage of water, but it's ridiculous. You need to be drinking water. Uh, also, go outside and take a walk. You would not believe how well that is, that does for everything, you know? It is so good for yourself, but it also, um, is how they treat uh, PTSD and complex PTSD now. Because going outside, uh, instead of you being stuck in the fight or flight, you walk outside and you have, your brain has to stop being stuck in that mode so that it can focus on walking on an uneven surface. And then if it's cold outside, you feel the uh, external temperature in your skin. And people who have PTSD and CPTSD have to learn how to feel the exterior of their skin again. That's the reason people join the polar bear club. And they jump into icy pools. And they go walking in the winter. Because <laughs> they're so cold, they are cold in places they forgot about. That's what that is, is you have disassociated yourself from your body for so long that you have to learn that you live in your body again. And you have to... I mean, it's wild. Look it up. CPTSD, touch therapy. It's crazy. So, um, personally, I live out in the woods. You know, Mama Wolf grew up in the Appalachian Mountains and in the foothills. And so when we moved to West Georgia, oh my goodness, great. Uh, oh, thank you, Lord. We have a big patch of woods behind us that we share with our neighbors. And we use them for riding trails and four-wheel trails and just, you know, razor trails, you know, whatever. <laughs> Red <-dicking. laughs> And I have started building a deer blind. <laughs> and when I told a friend of mine this today, I think he's like nine years old. 
And I said, man, I'm building deer blind. You need to come over to my house and see it. And he kind of looked at me like, what in the world? A deer blind, for y'all that don't know, <laughs> is where you go find a place in the woods that's how, like away from everybody, but you can still see them. And you scratch up the ground and you just make it look like something naturally occurred there. Okay, and that's where you put your moonshine stills. <laughs> that's where you hide out and hide behind the bushes and stuff that you pile up on the side and, you know, hunt and stuff. I'm a vegetarian, but I go and I still go hunting because it's just so much fun. I don't shoot anything except with my camera. But to me, that is like the most fun. Go sitting in the woods and River loves it too. River is like one of my best hunting dogs I've ever had. She's actually my first hunting dog I've ever had. I became a vegetarian and then started hunting. <laughs> so, yeah, weight loss. Go build a deer blind. <laughs> it's in that same paragraph. Oh, cutting back on social media. You know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. I find that I'd go in big, great spells and use it a lot, and then other times I don't pick it up at all. And I find, though, that I am a victim of uh, uh, online hijack a lot of times where uh, you'll grab it and you're doing one thing. You're going to send your friend a request for that recipe for the banana bread or the pumpkin bread that they made you at Christmas, right? So you go to Facebook. And then you get abducted by aliens, <laughs> right? Three hours later, they drop you back off. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask for that recipe, right? So, as me, that's what I would advise you to do. Cutting back on social media, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's a very good idea. In fact, my son, my son tutors in a college downtown in Atlanta. And he gave one of these little notebooks to all of his students. And this is, there's nothing special about this. You go to the Dollar General or the Dollar 25 tree and you buy one of these. It's like in a pack of like three or four for a dollar. And he said, start using this to make notes in. So like grocery notes, like appointments, like things you want to ask your doctor when you have their 10 minutes of attention. Uh, anything like that. And what, you know, yes, there's apps for all of this, but there's just something about taking it and writing it in this. And you know what? You don't have to charge it. It is actually smaller than your phone. I will show you, but I'm using my phone, obviously. But it's smaller than your phone. Uh, you can take and, you know, pick your teeth with it, prop a table up with it. You can have your friends write encouraging messages inside of it, which is what I ended up doing. And it's just wonderful. So the way I use mine is anything that's disposable, I write on the back page because this is a thing with me. I try to only write on the front page so that you can rip out the pages later and you still have your full thing and you don't have to flip the pages. So for that, the back of the page is disposable for me. And so I will write things like grocery list and stuff on the back page and then I'll take and scratch it off. And then the next page will be something like, make sure that you ask the doctor about blah, blah, blah. So grab one of these and check it out. You'd be surprised at how much you start to use it. Um, this is not the one I'm using right now. The one I'm using right now is upstairs with my stuff in case I have to leave and go. I always keep my stuff in one place. Always keep your car keys in the same place, right? So it's up there with that. Okay. Cutting back on social media. Blah, blah. So that's the notebooks. My filing system. I'd like to talk to you about that because one of the things that people talk about with me is getting more organized. Y'all, I phew, homeschooling organized my life. I had to. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you homeschool, don't really overthink it. And really, even if you're not homeschooling, don't overthink it. The best secretary you've got is your phone. What? Yes, absolutely. When I was homeschooling my son, anytime I took him to like an extracurricular activity or an extra class or an extra lab or a dissection over here or a class over here or a whatever and whatever, I would write down where it was and I would uh, type why we or write why we took it, blah, 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 whatever. And I would take a picture of that. 
And then while he was at the activity, I take pictures of him doing it. And so later that year, I took all of those photographs and stuff on my phone, and I backed it up on my computer under a file that was his school year. So then I go back now, and he's graduated, he's done, grown up, moved out of my house. But I can go back and tell you that in the fourth grade, we went to so-and-so's house on this date, and we dissected a dogfish, which is similar to a shark, it's about that long, and his eyeball popped out at us and scared us to death, and we all ran away screaming. <laughs> because it was like, bloop! <laughs> it was a straight jump scare. Boop! <laughs> And my son was sitting around the table with all of his friends. There was about 12 boys there. And all of a sudden, that eye popped out. And all 12 of them boys, they was just going, boom. <laughs> and I'm like, y'all come back over here and quit being babies. <laughs> just a fish. <laughs> Ooh, Appalachian people. Dissecting things. Uh, so, yeah, use your phone. Seriously, it's the best secretary you'll ever have. And, I mean, she's always with you, right? Um... But have been talking about have been talking about the small notebooks. This is the notebook that I actually like to have. Is these small notebooks. And I think they're like a five by eight. No, I'm not really sure what size this is. Let's just measure it real quick. It is a six. Boy, I was way off. A six by nine. <laughs> See, my family in Europe will go, see, she can't measure in English either. It's bad. <laughs> it's real bad. <laughs> so, I get this kind of notebook, and I have the kind that has the line down the middle, which, there's a reason for that, but not right now. And so, what I do is I take my notes, and after I finish taking my notes for like whatever I'm doing, I put it in different file folders because again, I've only written on the first page and I will show you, we'll get into these file folders in a minute. Like for example, this right here is a class that I took from BYU, believe it or not, believe it or not. <laughs> it's on uh, YouTube and it is a class on uh, science fiction writing. Is wonderful. I think it's taught by Brandon Sanders. I think that's his name. That might be not right. But I'll I'll put the link out here on the show notes so you can get it. But here was all of my notes from that class. And as you can see, um, I've got all kinds of little pages and stuff. Because these were the notes that I go back and study. And when I'm done with it, I took them out. Again, see, I've not written on the back. I've taken them out. They're all together. They, I haven't stapled, yeah, I did staple them. I stapled it up in the corner. And this right here is a file folder that, just a simple file folder. And I have scrapbooked the outside. And then I have also used the packing tape, not only to protect my design that I have scrapbooked here, but also to um, seal the ends. Um, cross stitchers use those little bags. They're so cute to put all their projects in. I'm doing the same thing here. It's really what's going on. And so I have a notebook and this is how I keep my things organized. Huh, how about that? And uh, here actually is the one I use for my phone calls. I take notes when I make phone calls because I have been diagnosed, are you ready for this, with talking too much. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that ain't a, that ain't a, that's a thing. I come from a proud line of talkers. I will talk your ear off and it's a problem, which is why I use these notebooks when I'm talking because I, to somebody on the phone, because I have to stop and remind myself that there's another person in the conversation and shut up. <laughs> so I'm going to do a, uh, a uh, video just on how, well, a lot of that, because there's a lot of therapy you have to do to learn how to live amongst people and talk to them. But I take all of my notes from when I talk to people on the phone, and I gather them together, and I have a phone thing. That way, when I call my friend back that's having drama, I remember all the drama. And I seem like the best, coolest friend in the world. Y'all, I can't remember what I ate for dinner last night. Write it down. 
And the outside of this is amazing. I love this. This is a copy. This isn't the original, but this is a copy of a piece of art that a dear friend of mine drew. And I love Volkswagens. And she's going to be surprised to see it there, I think. And then there's my son reading the foot book with his foot all in my face. And then here is a drawing that I did of my aunt uh, Joyce's back porch. It's one of the most peaceful places in the world. My coloring book that's on Amazon has that. And then here is a character that's very well known in Germany. And his name is Diddle. And he is saying, congratulations for all the things and all the celebrations to remind me to congratulate people on their birthdays and such. So, yeah, there's my little folder and my friend Erica's beautiful drawing. She did that in 2020. <sighs> okay, so there's the phone records. Um, and these phone records also are very helpful for when you want to... Uh, if your one of your resolutions might be to spend more time catching up with your friends, uh, making a phone call to people. Uh, you know, 2023 was hard for so many people. And so, you know, make sure you're checking on them. All right, we've talked about it. It takes 28 days to create a habit, whether it be good or bad. That's true. Mm. I broke my leg last year. I broke it really well. Mm. But anything worth doing, right? And so I spent way more than 28 days laying on the couch being sorry for myself. So it created a habit of me getting up every day and feeling sorry for myself. That is no way to be. Spend every day, get up, talk to yourself like you would talk to your child, okay? That's what you need to do. Because um, a lot of us, if somebody stood in front of us and said the things that we say to ourselves, oh, we'd bail them in the mouth, Right? So, retrain how you talk to yourself in 2024. If you do nothing else, do that. Talk to yourself the way that Steve Irwin talks about that creepy whatever he's done picked up. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, another good resolution is to pick something that you want to start that will last for the rest of your life. Um, because, really, what sparks joy for you? Um, and that's interesting that I wrote that spark and joy because, um, I did the Marie Kondo thing a couple of years ago where you take and you clean out all of your house and you only keep stuff that you really, really like and that you really want to continue to carry through your life. And at the very end of that, they tell you to do the sentimental things. And my sentimental things were all writing projects. So now I'm beginning to get into all those old writing projects that I had shelved for whatever reason. And so that's my goal in 2024 is I'm going to pull those out of the dust and the mothballs and hopefully get them published. We'll see how that works. Okay. So um, when you were looking at something to do uh, that would uh, start, you know, something that you want to continue, what? One of the things that you can think about is what did you enjoy doing the most when you were a kid? For me, I loved drawing and I loved reading and I loved writing stories and just imagining and just daydreaming and playing pretend and things like that. That was my thing. So now as I have, you know, gotten older, because uh, I am not grown up, uh, I find that's the thing I still enjoy doing is, you know, having that world of make pretend and such. But as an author, you get to play pretend in your head and just write it down as everybody does whatever they're doing. And I think every writer will say, yeah, girl, that's exactly what's up because that really is what it's like. It's fantastic. So um, let's see. Easy ones that everybody should do. Drink more water. We touched on this earlier, but let's talk about it for a minute. You really do need to be drinking more water. Let me just be your mama and tell you right now, have you been drinking water? No, you haven't. The Southern rule in the United States about drinking water, this is actually from my husband's grandfather. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they just simply called him Big because he has the same name as my husband. So he was Big James and I have my James. Okay. He told us to drink all the time even before you get thirsty, because by the time you done got thirsty, it's done too late, and it's like the oil light in your car. By the time it comes on, it's done too late. Mm -mm. 
always have something to drink. But mostly that comes from the extremely hot, humid summers we have here in the South. It made me thirsty just thinking about it. This is the second thing I'm going to tell you. Get yourself one of these kind of, like, metal cups that keep your drink cold. Whole new ball game when you put ice water in that thing, and you can sit and sip on ice water all day. Now, my European viewers will see this and go, Nine! You don't drink ice water! What's wrong with you? Because in Europe... It is a common cultural belief that drinking something that is a colder temperature than your body will make you get sick because your body has to work harder to get that drink to become the same temperature as your guts. Makes sense? I'm from South, I'm from the Appalachians. We can drink it. We can drink hot, cold, moonshine, whatever. <laughs> paint thinner. <laughs> Don't go drink paint thinner. But yeah, um, interestingly enough, one of the first signs of dehydration, mimic anxiety. <sighs> Next subject, sleep. Are you getting enough? If you're not, talk to your doctor. But you also, they've got this neat little thing on Netflix called Headspace. Oh, I love that. And it is so neat. And the ones for you can go and listen to it at night. I love the bookshop guy. And he will just sit there. It's like Dumbledore or something. He sits there and he talks to you as you grow heavier in the sofa in front of the fire <laughs> in the bookstore. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Fitness and PE class. Who hated P.E. growing up? <laughs> God. Y'all, y'all should be doing P.E. even now. I'm telling you, it is legit. You need to be moving and stretching your body. If nothing else, just get up, do some yoga, stretch, just, you know, sit in the chair, just roll them shoulders back, pick yourself up on the edges of the chair, you know, and just hang out there like you just don't care. And, you know, see how long you can do it? I can do this for a very long time because... I've been on crutches for <sighs> three times in the past four years, right? Mm-mm, I ain't doing it again. Shoot me, put me on my misery. We can't do it again. Talking about fitness, walking. Walking is just so beneficial for so many things. Uh, my drum teacher tells me, you want to be able to play the drums longer? Start walking. It just helps everything. Um, one thing that we found in 2020 is that there are all kinds of virtual marathons and stuff that you can sign up for online. You can challenge your friend to it. And do they send the bling? They send the bling. I've got the bling hanging on the wall right here. Look here. Yep, there it is. Me, me and my sister, my sister and I both did the great toilet paper race of twenty twenty. <laughs> yep, yeah, that was just a regular 5K race. And we just walked it. And I was, well, I put my number in. And I didn't do like any goofy, like duck walking looking stuff. I just walked around in the woods. And then my phone told me I'd walked, you know, five kilometers or five, whatever. And uh, then I was done. And so I put my medal on the wall and said, ah, and I, Put in my number. I got like 14th place nationally at the time. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. But just Google that. They're all over the place. Um, dancing. Dancing is a wonderful way that you can uh, get fit. Uh, when my son was a little bitty guy, uh, he loved to watch the Wiggles. And so, that's what we would do every day. We got up and we danced along with the Wiggles. And whoo, that's an aerobic workout. Go dance with the Wiggles. <laughs> Fruit salad, in and in, yummy. I love the Wiggles. They're great. Meditation and self-awareness. Y'all, y'all need to work on this. It's so great. I read a book this past year that was called Think Like a Monk by uh, Jay Shelley. Fantastic. 
One of the first things that you learn in monk school is how to control your breathing. Now, it's really interesting because there's studies coming out now that are talking about people who have PTSD. Uh, they naturally are taking panicked, shorter, less meaningful breaths. So when you do this, <laughs> you know, like that, you're not getting the necessary oxygen that you need into the places of your brain to make it work. So because of that, the oxygen deprivation uh, is happening right there where your brain needs it to uh, work to keep you from being so anxious. So ain't that something? If we just would take and retrain ourselves to take a deeper breath, according to that study, just whenever you think about it. Oh, it smells good in here. I'm burning a candle, that's right. So whenever you think about it, just take a deeper breath. My son says you take, you count to four as you breathe in. One, two, three, four. Breathe in, then you hold it. And then you count to ten as you breathe out. How about that? Try that out. Four, four, ten. Okay. I also read a book recently that was talking about, really, if you have a lot of anxiety, to recognize it about yourself. And any time that you think to do it, just mentally check yourself and relax. And holy crap, I started doing this. <laughs> I was in here typing at the computer, and I was like, I'm like why are you so tense? <laughs> I just, what the heck? I also will notice it a lot in my jaw where I have to unclench my jaw. And I think that's where a lot of people hold a lot of tension. But women in particular hold a lot of tension in their hips. So there's all kinds of exercises and stuff that you can find on uh, Google and things to how to get the stress and how to release and uh, relax your hips. Because if you don't, you're going to have sciatic problems and excess. Okay, Marie Kondo in the house. I'm telling you what, I think everybody should do that. That was the best thing ever. Uh, one of the things that uh, most people clean out every year or, you know, uh, is their closet. And one of the things in her book was talking about uh, when you are cleaning out your closet, um, get rid of anything that you would not purchase in the current state that it's in. Now, you know, of course, there's those shirts and things that are sentimental or whatever. And so, of course, you hang on to that. But, I mean, if it's sentimental, whatever. But it was amazing to me when I applied this, you know, to my uh, clothes. I found that I held on to so many, like, sleepy pajamas, pajama pants. That was my thing. I had pajama pants and mo pajama. I mean, I could... Ooh, I could pajama every day for like years and never wore it. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad. But that was like a whole bunch of pajama pants. And when I went through them, the ones that I would have purchased in that condition was like none. None, really. And so I got rid of all of them. I went to the store. I bought myself one good pair of pajama pants. And I love them. And there's just something about going and putting on clothes that are in good condition and they are nice and you know I grew up poor so I always got hand-me-downs you know and I loved them because I just thought my older cousins were the coolest thing in sliced bread you know and so I get to wear their clothes and I was like this is me I'm them you know because you always idolize them hot them people that are older and you're like man this is how we doing it I'm getting to be them and I'm pretending to be them because I'm wearing their clothes but you know you grow up and you're still finding clothes like that and you're like yeah you know and uh no you've grown up go buy some clothes that are your own and it will really help out let's see um also with Marie Kondo in the house make sure that you have things that serve more than one use um you know my sister is the expert at this and it's because she lives in an honest to god tiny house my little sister lives in less than 400 square feet and her organization is, oh my God, she needs to start a YouTube channel just on that.
start a YouTube channel on there. <laughs> Next subject, your mental health. If you haven't made that a priority in your life, it will make it a priority in your life. Self-care, it's important. One thing you can do for your mental health is to read. One of the things, and that's something I find to be very soothing for myself. But make sure you're reading a book that's something that interests you. Because uh, reading something that's not interesting is like learning something that's not interesting. We used to relate that in homeschooling to throwing marshmallows at the side of your kid's head and calling it eating because it's that effective. Mm -hmm. Find a book that interests you. Take a class. Anybody that homeschools, and this is the New Year's resolution video, <clears throat> their resolution is just to get through the end of the year. Can I get a witness? Oh, my God. Right now, if you're homeschooling your kid and it's Christmas and you haven't gave them Christmas books, that are, I mean, school books for next year, you have at least looked at them because <laughs> you over this year already. You're like, huh? And it is. I remember January, February, and March. Hi, River, being so hard for us to get through. And when um, my son got older, we adopted a three week on, one week off policy, which meant, yes, this is River need knowledge, which meant that we did school every day for three weeks, Monday through Thursday. We did not do school on Friday. That was a catch-up day if you needed to catch up on stuff. But we did school Monday through Friday for three weeks. And then if we hit every one of those four days, yeah, then we took a break. The whole week was off. And that is how we did school and didn't kill each other or start chewing on a dog. <laughs> so I'd advise you to do that. And go ahead and start looking at curricular, curriculum for next year. But... Get your kids involved in it. Ask them what would they like to learn about. They might surprise you. Uh, one year, I asked my son what he would like to learn about, and he said Japanese. <laughs> Japanese? Well, he had already taken Korean, so I guess it wasn't that far of a leap for him, but he did. He found a class that he could take. <laughs> What's wrong? Okay. I have to pause it. Okay, sorry about that. Apparently, River needed to go show me my clothes that I was wearing at my friend's house where I was petting a dog and cheating on her. <laughs> so, yeah, she took me up there. She like, I'm like, yes, I've been cheating on you. Okay, we were talking about a class. Yes, homeschool ruts are normal. Go to some museums. Get out of the house. It was, it's cold. It's miserable. It's awful. Do some arts and crafts, which I'm going to film some arts and things uh, in the first week of the new year. Because art, as important as it is, and obviously, you know, I'm a professional artist, um, it is something we really didn't do a lot in our, high, in our home school. And I look back at it now, and I'm like, Man, we could have done so many other things. I mean, that piece right there that's behind me is a painting that my son did when he was 10 years old. And uh, it was probably one of the few things we did that year, but he's just more of a math and science kid. Mom's the art person. So I'm going to put some art lessons on because art is life. So, um, taking a class. Um... You can find classes all over the place. Uh, MIT has uh, a lot of their classes online now for free. Uh, Udemy is another place where we've taken classes before. Easy Peasy, All-in-One Homeschool, that is amazing. That's where my son found his Japanese class, too. And YouTube. And we use that for everything now. You want to know how to do anything, go to YouTube. So, my dog is about to start scratching his back. Look at this crazy man. <laughs> I sure. I sure you gonna scratch your back. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, the good scratching. Oh, it's just so good. Oh, yeah. He does this all day. This is his favorite thing to do. Oscar. Oh, is it the best scratchy ever? Yes. Oh, you keep going, boy. Keep getting your scratch off. So when you hear him over there going, <laughs> you know what he's doing. He's scratching his back. <laughs> he's crazy. All right, taking classes. I mean, you can find them all over the place. 
um, apps for things, uh, language apps. We've talked about that. One thing I advise everybody to do once they get to middle school is take a speed. <coughs> what? What's wrong? Take a speed reading course. Trust me, it will help you your whole life, and you only get faster after you've taken a class. It's good stuff. Uh, Libby. Libby is an app that I'm going to do a whole video on, but basically Libby is an app that is a gateway into your... Seriously, look at this. It's what I'm... Why do we have to have all the attention all the time, you two? <laughs> now it's time for Take 5, where we take five random pictures and talk about them. Are you ready? Well, come on then. Oh, here is Corbin outside the International Space Station. He's doing a unit study on astronomy. <laughs> this is not the side of the station you want to be on. Oh, my friend. Here is a picture of Oscar. Yes! And that picture is uh, part of our book, Deaf Dog, that's available on Amazon. There is my sister and that creepy elf that our mom has at her house. Ooh, we was chasing the dogs around with that thing. And girl, you better sleep with one eye open. Mm-hmm. That thing's creepy. And here I am with my bearded dragon, who, as you can see, is using me as a mattress. <laughs> That's Miss Alice. And when you are near Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, pop into the Carolina Museum of Aviation and you can see the plane that landed in the Hudson there in the window of this picture. How awesome is that? Get outside. Sorry about that. I went and got the kids busy doing something else. Watching Henry Window missions. <laughs> um, Libby. Libby is amazing. I love it. And it is an app. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. It's an app that is a gateway into your public school or your public library system. Public library system. Um, in Florida, they have done a lot of uh, um, promotion on this kind of such because every time that a hurricane rolls through, Florida, what happens to the libraries? So wouldn't it make more sense that we invest in digital books and digital stuff? And the thing is, when you do di digitally, I can be sitting on my couch in my drawers. <laughs> and I have access to thousands of magazines. I can download instantly, read on my phone, on my iPad, on my computer, you know, wherever, in my dear blind, and then as soon as I'm done with it, I return it. There's no late fees because when it's due, they just take it back. And that's good because, uh, real talk. I want to know how, what has been your highest fee with the library? Homeschoolers love playing this game. Mine, it's like $36. <laughs> it was so bad. Do you know they put a limit on it now to $10? That's madness. Homeschoolers, that's, that's what we brag about. Hey, I bet my fine at the library is more than yours. It ain't. <laughs> Audiobooks. My husband and my son argue with me about this all the time. The audiobooks are not reading. Kiss my grits. It is reading. It is reading. Let's talk about that for a minute. When your child was an itty bitty little baby and would not sleep anywhere in the car, I mean anywhere but in the car, did we count that as sleeping? Yes. So why in the world are we not considering the audiobooks, which is basically a read aloud that our grandmothers used to do with us when they would sit us in our lap and say, okay, little baby, baby, we're going to read about the three little kittens have lost their... My mother used to read that to us. The three little kittens that have lost their mittens. And she would do a different voice for each one. That 
is how you get a child to fall in love with reading. You just have them lay up against you as you read this book to them because you want them to associate reading with something as much fun as eating their Halloween candy or their sister's Halloween candy. Today's my sister's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Another thing that uh, was suggested in all of these uh, uh, New Year's resolution things was to create a five-year plan and a mission statement. This is interesting. There's a book that talks more about this. It is called right here, Forward Facing Trauma Therapy. And talking about a speed reading course, I read this whole book in like four to five minutes. Yeah. It's good stuff. And they talk in there about uh, um, creating a mission statement. And that's really good stuff. I like it. Uh, interesting side note. My mission statement is I'm a teacher. I have always been a teacher. When we played school and I was, we were kids, I played the teacher. My mom has always been the nurse. And that's what she retired from. She is a nurse, a real nurse, an RN. And my sister is just a bad, mm, bad ass. <laughs> She'd say, yeah, that's my life's purpose. Woo, that's right. Be a mentor. This I preach to all of my kids that I currently mentor. Be a mentor. Find a mentor. This is so important. And going back to things that we'll talk about later with the Bible, it talks about how you're supposed to do this anyway. Love each other, right? But find a mentor, be a mentor, because y'all, life's tough enough. You need to have a team. And if you do not have a team, start one. And that's how you do it. You mentor people. And that's not that hard. Somebody told me back when my son was a little boy to be the kid, be the person that you needed when he, wait, be the person you needed when you were that age. And, you know, I think that is just good advice for everybody. Be the person that that person needed. You know, now, of course, there's limitations to all of this, you know, and such like that. But children in particular, need to have this in their life. You know, even if you just see a child maybe once a month for just like 10 minutes, everybody should know this about kids. Just kids think you know every little thing that's going on in their life. You can have a magic ball and you can see in their head and you know what they're thinking. Because think about being a kid. Didn't you think that? They know everything going on in my life. You know? And so... One of the things, too, with kids is um, they are subject to a lot of rules that are coming from people who are very always taller than they are. I never got very tall, so I still struggle with this because <laughs> it's always somebody looking down at me. So for a child, you're an adult. It's somebody else looking down at them and talking at, the, at them, not to them, at them. So when you get around children, Kneel down. Get eye to eye with them. Smile when you look into their face because that gives that child the um, idea and the comfort of thinking that you've got it figured out and you're a safe person, hopefully. And so smile when you look into the face of a child. I tell that about my dogs, too. I wrote that in River's book. They finally have calmed down. <laughs> Always smile. Always smile when you look into the face of a child. Talking about finding a mentor, I want to give a shout out to my mentees because at the end of the year, Michael, number one, Michael, number two, Bentley, India, and Michelle all either have books that have went to the publisher or books that are about to go and get wrote or books that they're planning or books that they're currently in progress. I am so proud of each and one of every one of you. Michael, Michael, Bentley, Bentley had said, India. Oh my gosh, India, you're, you're a wild woman. I love it. And Michelle, go girl. Another thing that you need to probably do at the beginning of the new year when you're thinking about doing uh, New Year's resolutions is to reevaluate your goals that you made last year. 
you know, my husband and I experienced a life-changing thing this year. Our son moved out. We became empty nesters. And, you know, kind of miss him. Kind of dig this empty nest thing. <laughs> but, uh, another thing, take a break. You don't have to be doing something off time. You know, I know so many people that are like this all the time. They're like, you're sitting around doing nothing. You're being lazy to lazy all over you. Yes, the lazy is all over me. And you know what? There ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm going to sit here and be lazy because you know what I'm doing is I'm letting my brain rest. Because I think a whole lot. And when my brain rests, it comes back out of that corner. And ooh, we'll get into that. Cook more from home. Cook more at home instead of eating out so much. This is a resolution that I have probably made every year <laughs> until my son was born. Oh, my son has life-threatening food allergies. So we cooked at home from then. Um, Several tips I have about this of wanting to save more money at the grocery store because can I get a witness? It costs like $100 just to walk into the Durham grocery store as a cover charge. Amen. Right. One of the things you need to do uh, when you are making your grocery list is to shop at home first. This is such an easy thing. Open up your cabinets, open up the refrigerator, open up the freezer, and just collect everything. Take a notebook, like so. Take a notebook and write out with the things you have on hand right now, what could you make? A grilled cheese sandwich? Um, fried rice? Um, vegetables? Uh, roasted vegetables? You know, uh, let's see, what else? Um, you know, whatever, spaghetti. Make the list of what you can make with the things you have on hand. And then, after you've wrote it down, put it on the refrigerator door. You've already thought about this. You don't have to think about it ever again. Go write it on the door. And when you make the spaghetti, stretch it out. It's like a menu for your house. Who? What a great idea. So you shop at home first. You've already made your list of things that you can have. But when you do this, you're inadvertently going to find things that, you know, if I just had... <laughs> Okay, a shadow needed to be murdered. River. So, while you're going through things, if you find that you need like one or two things to make this, then there you go. That's how you make a grocery list. Shop at home first. Um, I used to get on Pinterest and I'd come up with like five new recipes a week. Yeah! No, 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 no. Come up with three new recipes. No, I'm sorry. Three regular meals one new recipe, and one takeout night. This is how we do it at our house. Let me show you. Monday is meatless. Meatless Monday. We always know it's going to be a primarily vegetarian food on Monday. Now, I'm a vegetarian full-time, but my husband and my son are both savages, and they still eat meat. So, on Monday, I just don't even make... I just don't even make it. Anyway, meatless Monday, Mondays. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday also can just be Mexican cuisine, go out to eat at the Mexican restaurant, but it's Taco Tuesday. Weirdo Wednesday is when you clean out the refrigerator and the freezer, and it's just whatever. It's just stuff that don't go together, but it's a lot of fun. So on those nights, we might have things like mashed potatoes and, uh, you know, hamburgers or hot dogs or something. Things that don't go together, but you need to get it out of the fridge or you need to eat it up before it goes bad. So we do that on Weirdo Wednesday or Rerun Wednesday is what we called it when I was growing up. Reruns. Instead of leftovers, they were reruns. <laughs> and you don't pray over your reruns. The Lord done blessed it. <laughs> the Lord's like, <laughs> come on. Thursday? What? Ah, oh, River. Come here. Thursday is takeout Thursday. So you go and you... Get River! Hmm. All right, I'm back. I was getting wild at my mash. Okay, so we got to take out Thursday, so or take away Thursday, and uh, here recently that's been my husband stopping at the Chinese restaurant on the way home, and we've been getting some of that. It's been so good. And then fin for yourself Friday. <laughs> 
which speaks for itself. <laughs> Feed for yourself Friday. Um, the plan and prep meals, um, I do this all the time when I come home, especially being a vegetarian. This is such a benefit to do this of when you buy like peppers or onions or um, blueberries, anything, bring them home, cut them up, put them in your little container so that you can just go ahead and pull it out of the refrigerator and eat it. You know, I have a bearded dragon too. So me and her share our vegetables. <laughs> it's dragon and mom food. And so, um, that's how I do it. As soon as I bring the blueberries home, I wash them. I put them in their little container, and me and her can just sit and pick them out. And But you can do that for everything. It just makes life so much easier when you're cooking, and you don't have to sit there and cut all day long. You know, put on some Elvis, cut up some vegetables. It's wonderful. Also, write down a weekly meal plan, and then reuse it. Oh my gosh, this is so simple. A friend of mine told me to do this once. Asia told me to do it once, and I did it. And yes, these are these real people's names, Asia, India. And I did it, and it's been like the coolest thing ever, but my husband's over it now. <laughs> also, it said to host a dinner party. <clears throat> Relationship building. You know what? I ain't even getting into this, but just work on that. And make time for your spouse. Do date nights, uh, where you can do video game night. Uh, my husband and I both enjoy going camping. Uh, we like riding bicycles together. Um, we like, I don't know, we just like hanging out together and such like that. He is a uh, car enthusiast, and so he likes going and doing car stuff. And so, uh, just whatever. And then there's a uh, there's books that you can purchase where you have like scratch off date night ideas. And I've thought about getting those. If you've got one of those, let me know what you think about it because I thought about it. Stress management. This is a big one. Practice daily deep breathing. And you know, we've talked about the study already in Australia. The self-care routine that I use actually is used by the Hindu people, which is, I don't know how you would pronounce it, but it's A-Y-U-R-V-E-D. Start over again. A-Y-U-R-V-E-D-A. -E Morning ritual. This is fascinating. First thing you do is you wake up at the same time every day. And then you scrape your tongue. You don't brush it off. You scrape your tongue. And they do that because they believe that the alma, I guess that's how you say it, the AMA, was produced by undigested food. And let me tell you right now, I have been doing this now for a couple of months. And I can go like a day and not do it. But if I go two days, it just feels grody in my mouth. But it, it man, I use some disposable scrapers so I can throw them away because they will gag you. Then after you do that, rinse your mouth out really good and then brush your teeth because you don't want any of that in your mouth. Brush your teeth. And then you blow your nose really, really well. Or if you do the neti pot, I don't want to drown myself, so I don't do that. <laughs> and then you go have your coffee, your tea, your mystical potion that gets you going in the morning. And then you meditate. And then after you meditate, you go have a shower. And then you rub yourself up with lotions and everything, and that's how you start your day. I can get down with that. In fact, I do get down with that. That's how I roll. Let's see. Uh, so self-care routine. We just talked about that. Set realistic expectations for yourself. I do this all the time. I am always out to lunch with what my expectations are, and I need to reel it in and be real about it. <sighs> Music. Let's talk about music. I love music. And we talked about it before where I learned sign language by my grandfather signing to me when we would dance and we would play and have fun up at my grandparents' house. So music still is a huge part of my life. You see, I play the drums over here. My son plays an instrument. My husband plays. And that is just the thing. And so I have uh, a Spotify, but I also have, of course, the YouTube and one of the things I've done is I've went through and I watch videos on YouTube. And I have a folder. It's just my favorite music videos. 
and I go sit down in the living room and I just, it's like MTV, man. And it's like, you know, you get a commercial every three minutes. It's beautiful. And after it gets an idea of what you like to listen to, it'll start putting in other things like that. So it's great. And I love it. Um, but I call it the blow up the Death Star playlist because, yo, you know, it's got to be like that. So I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to think about this. What is on your playlist on the way to go blow up the Death Star? I know what's on my playlist. Trouble by Elvis. Oh, you're looking for trouble? Bum, 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 bum. You know, that's just one of my songs. Man. That's my grandmother's favorite song. Uh, some of my n new favorites, though, would be Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Oh, my gosh. Mm, that's an empowering song. You listen to that song? Whew, you ready to go whoop somebody. Uh, and then you can have them, Jolene, by Chapel Heart. Woo, finish it up with that one. You'll be ready to go whoop everybody. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> okay. Tips on keeping your resolutions. Uh, tell yourself that it's just a tryout until February. You know, the Catholics celebrate Lent uh, from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, which is 40 days. You can do anything for 40 days. I gave up soda for 40 days. And on the 42nd day, I tried to drink it, and I've never been able to do it. So, there you go, 40 days. But we're being more graceful and saying until February. But remember, it only takes how many days to set a habit? 28. Recruit or draft a friend to help you keep your resolutions. Draft your friend. Hey, you know what? We're going to start eating more from home. And it was your friend you used to go out and eat with all the time. <laughs> and remember that perfection is not the gold. Growth is the gold. That's initially, that's what you want to have in the end. Baby steps is still a step in the right direction, even as long as it's a step in the right direction. But you are going to make a few steps back and give yourself grace that you're going to do that. Also, write it down. Dreams... Are dreams and you write them down and then they become goals when you can see them and they become tangible even if it's just a statement written on a piece of paper it's a goal stop dreaming make some goals so what is my resolution for 2024 well, after talking about all of this you know I had a long time to think about it because I was planning on shooting this show last night shooting the show shed it really first a lot and then instead, I decided to make a punch list, and that way I could, you know. So, my resolutions, I had some crazy ones. And talking about setting unrealistic things, I really had set some unrealistic stuff. And, uh, but I think now that I've had time to sleep on it, that's something I'd advise you to do. Really sleep on it before you make any big decisions. Is... Number one, I'm going to keep moving forward because 2023 was really, really hard. And there was some times in there where it was really, really bad. It was really low. But I kind of, you know, I feel like I'm on the upswing of it now. And so I'm just going to keep moving forward. That's my resolution. And so, you know, I can tell you that I'm going to take drum lessons. I'm going to read I'm going to continue to research my family tree and start to write things down because it makes, my mother was complaining about this at Christmas. Why does everybody research their family? Didn't they find you out in town? They said, let me tell you this crazy crap I found out about our family. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's cool. Can you write it down and send it to me? Oh, I ain't writing it down. And I asked my mom, I said, well, have you wrote down any of this cool stuff you found? She's like, oh, what are you talking about me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about you. So, I am going to continue to research my family, and I'm going to write down what I find. <clears throat> and I'm going to encourage my mother. I'm going to draft my mother to do the same. <laughs> and I would like to publish another book. Currently, I have four books on Amazon that are available to publish. Uh, one is River's book, which is Deaf Dog, and it is the book on how we do life with a dog who is deaf. 
If you're looking to learn American Sign Language, that's the book for you because American Sign Language is truly two different languages. It's the alphabet and it's all the fun signs. And because we're teaching a dog, we don't have to teach her how to spell. So you don't even see the alphabet until the very end of the book. You get all the fun words. And so you open it up and the first day, you learn how to say water, food, and outside. And she's sitting underneath me, so she didn't see that. <laughs> oh, me. So that's what I want to do. Another book that I just published this past year is called The Drag Queen Cockroach of Atlanta. That one has been pretty successful, and it's got a lot of stories in there about my mom. It's also got a story about my Aunt Mary going to a funeral at a snake handler's church. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're all written in Appalachian, if you can't tell from my language. But here are some of my current work in progress, my current whips. Yeah. So here are the folders that I have scrapbooked and fastened. This is a book... That is my first um, experiment with fiction. Experiment, not really. I've written like 14 fan fictions, so they're real saucy. If you want to read those, go look them up on fan fiction under Bender Mom. Like that robot on Futurama, Bender Mom. I don't care if you read it, whatever. <laughs> I'm a married woman. Of course, I wrote some hot, steamy sex. I mean, uh, excuse me, go ahead. <laughs> this is not for the kids' show. <laughs> So the working copy of this right now, I'm on draft four. The name of the book is Al The Alien from Earth, book one. The Runaway, the Book Ban, and Bigfoot. The ancient Smoky Mountains offers views like no other. Older than the rings of Saturn, the dinosaurs of Earth, or even the oceans, the Appalachian Mountains are home, or is home, to all sorts of strange stories. Tales of strange creatures such as Bigfoots and aliens are simply silly. At least that's what John would tell you. John, a human-looking genetic engineer from another world, comes to visit his family at the campground they run in the beautiful Maggie Valley area of North Carolina. While on the hunt for Bigfoot, John finds a runaway human child. After finding out about this boy's past, John decides to take him in as his own to, in order to prevent him from becoming another savage human. So... That is the book that I'm currently working on, and it's set in the beautiful Maggie Valley area between the chimneys. Awesome. And that's so much fun to write, because John is totally after him a Bigfoot. He thinks they're real. Because John's an alien, and he's going to teach us what it's like to be a human. Here's another book that I'm working on. It's a current work in progress, and when I told my cousin about this this morning, she went, <gasps> <laughs> when I was a little girl, the thing I looked forward to most more than anything in my whole, whole, the whole year was Christmas at my grandmother's house. Oh, because she shopped all year for Christmas presents and it was just the most fun and such. So I'm writing a story so we can go back to Nanny's house at Christmas anytime we want to. And so this is the scrapbook that I did of that. And it's pictures of us at Nanny's house at Christmas. And then here's some uh, redneck kind of stuff going on because Appalachia, you know. And this is the backside of it. And my grandmother used to keep us supplied in books like these. And there is some of the original uh, writing that I did back when I was like eight or nine years old. And I was watching The Parent Trap, the old Disney movie from 61. And it got to the part where Haley Mills was singing, Let's Get Together. And I thought that song was so neat. So Nanny had me sit in front of the television and pause it and write it all out. And I understand now why she did that. She was teaching me how to write from somebody, you know, I was learning to write. It was a classical education. This right here is another one that I work on. This is like my homework book. And that is for a class that I take. And then we've already looked at the phone notes, my work in progress. I also have some other books. Uh, I'm writing a book on the Appalachian culture. That's fascinating. 
And I'm doing a lot of research on that, which is why I went to go see my girlfriend today. Uh, she gave me a whole bunch of books. She owns an eBay, or she runs an eBay store, and she was going through some of her stock, and she had some books that she was like, ah, take them, take them, take them. And I'm like, yeah, 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 thank you. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> again. So um, then we talked about the job. And then I'm also writing a, my first play. Not really. It's actually this play that won the best play of the year, um, excuse me, when I took script writing in college. And I recently found it when I was Marie Kondoing my house. And so after opening it up and rereading it and finding how silly it truly was, I have uh, put it back into the computer because I had to retype everything in uh, because the file for this is long since gone. And so I typed it all in and now I'm rereading it and I'm rewriting it and I'm editing it and I'm hoping I'll be able to get this play produced and, uh, not produced, but uh uh, finished up, edited, and ready to be published before March. And currently that is my biggest work in progress. But, you know, if I publish a book next year, that's fine. I ended up publishing three books this year, which was a coloring book, a craft book, and then the Drag Queen Cockroach book. And those were the first books that I had published in three years. But, you know, I worked on them a little bit every bit that year. And some people tell you not to work, but on one book at a time. That's good if your brain works that way. That's the adult way to do it. That's how I really should. <laughs> um, another goal I have is I really want to dig into my YouTube and my YouTube channel and stuff. Because I think that there's a lot of people out there that I could probably help. If this helps one person, it's worth it. Because every one matters. And I think one more thing. Oh, that's a note that I've made for something else I need to do. <laughs> so that's it. That's all I had today for the New Year's edition of the Homeschool Teacher Next Door. So I will go ahead and throw in the show notes all of the different things that I have mentioned here. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Throw it down below and Happy New Year!